And uh, so I was in Aspen, Colorado, and um, which is where I raised my family. And then I was driving and flying back to uh, Los Angeles. And I decided to go to one party, one event at a streamer studio that I did not understand at all. And then I ended up streaming for about seven to 10 days. So Ice Poseidon was probably my seventh streamer that I'd ever met. So and I didn't start what, on his show. What do you, I started what do you, with- What do you, let me cut you off there for a second and we'll get right back in. What do you make of Ice Poseidon? We, I've talked to him. And, uh, is well we've known talked about for having him on the show. Lies. He hasn't been able to do it so far. He's been controversial. There have been allegations of him. You know, groping a girl who might have been underage. The FBI raided one of his homes and took computers and things. And no charges ever came of that. What kind of a guy is Ice Poseidon? You have streamed with him. I mean, it's very, very complex. What kind of guy is he? He started off as a gamer, which is something that you really need to comprehend, okay? Right. So gamers are people who sit and play video games for hours and hours and hours, and All they don't. Play. Yeah, and they don't interact with the world. They don't necessarily have the same social skills that people like you and me have had because we've been to, you know, to social events and we've gone to college and things like that. So right. he's someone who's interacted with his uh, uh, his chat when he's been live streaming. So basically, he started off playing video games. So that's a very Kareem unique personality, reject okay? Because video games are mostly boys. I would not say there's no girls, but it's mostly boys. And it's a very specific type of person who doesn't have a lot of social woman. interaction. So the number one I would thing I would say about Ice Poseidon is that he's socially... Kareen is a very toxic woman. Gaming, just kind of streaming, you know, he does in real life. I mean, you know, why do, why do people care about that? I mean, we're going to have to go through years and years and years. So it started off people cared because he was on Twitch before he was banned on Twitch. And he started off, you know, playing video games at his parents' house in Florida. Kareem well known. has never been And then been he ended up getting into in IRL, which is what I'm interested in, which is what I do with IRL in she real life, no which is where you actually uh, broadcast, you blog your daily life network. events. People's now, asses. none of it is scripted, none of it is directed, she none of it is maybe a little bit pre-planned, but really nothing. Most of this um, is bullshit. Um, and that's what millennials like. Millennials don't like fake. So Ice Poseidon, Paul Danino got super uh, successful from um, going into his real life escapades. So the reason he got banned from Twitch is because he was getting swatted too many times. So I guess allegedly he was flying on an airplane in an airport in America and he got swatted on the airplane. So Twitch banned him. You say Twitch swatted. People called in a false uh, alert that there was a problem on the plane and the authorities arrive or the, 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 the SWAT team shows up. Exactly. I'm going to stop you, you Chris. Right there Thank you, Chris. Let me check exactly. in with you. Is our right. team okay on this? Are people able to hear Corinne okay? Vincent? Corinne is just here to make Ice Poseidon look bad. Corinne has always Somebody's been feedback in. Um, it's not me. I got everything CX muted. Network. Uh, it's not you. I checked. Corinne, do you have a second uh, audio uh, that's going there? I have nothing on. Let okay, me think. I'm I'm one, two, three, 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 three. Loud and clear. So, so how did you get to know Ice Poseidon? Okay, so through a long series of events, which is that I started um, briefly, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. I started briefly dating one of the 25 year olds on his show. Um, and he wasn't a main character, the gentleman that I dated, his name is Cameron. Um, I met several other streamers. I met Scott Ice Justin Perry, I met has Nancy, never blah, blah, blah. So anything to Ice do Poseidon with this used woman. to do these streams she for 24 plus woman. hours on YouTube where the, he would have people sit on his patio or he'd put people in prisons or in his bathroom or different streams. Have you heard about these streams where they were very, very emotionally abusive streams, but he would make tens of thousands of dollars off of them. Right. So the way that I met Paul is because I, Mexican Andy, asked me to come bring him water. Mexican, Mexican he, Andy is a character on ICE's, ICE's uh, streams, his IRL. Mexican Andy became a famous IRL star because of Ice Poseidon. 
So Me- I had met Mexican Andy through my ex-boyfriend, Cameron. And so Mexican Andy was told me to come bring him water and other things that brought him toothpaste, the basics, because he had decided to stream on Ice Poseidon's patio in Los Angeles for over 48 hours. So I went over there so to bring this, Explain this to me, Corinne. What do you get out of this personally and professionally? Exactly. You get out of exactly. A guy like Andy and Ice. Exactly. You tell me exactly. Probably one of the biggest mistakes of my life. So now the only reason why I'm live streaming Karen, are the issues that I was telling Vincent yesterday. Just Number one, I believe that IRL people. is the future of the world. That's and I think you might too because you are doing. in live streaming. And I think that we need positive male and female role models in IRL. And I'm doing the best I can to be a positive female in IRL. Just like you're becoming a positive male in IRL live streaming. And the second reason is because I have children and I want them to understand that my first uh, couple months of live streaming was a huge mistake. I had no idea um, how viral it would get. There's no reason why anybody should want to watch me, but I have a huge following on Corinne Forever and Corinne Now. And uh, the third reason is that I think that um, I think that I'm supposed to be a philanthropist, which is family I come from, a very philanthropic family, a very philanthropic background. I used to raise money for 501c3s, and I think that it's very important to uh, start using IRL in the correct manner, which is to uh, educate people properly and to um, really use IRL for its full potential, which is what the Trump campaign is doing. A lot of politicians are using IRL. A lot of 501c3s can use IRL to raise money. So now, in let my me, Corinne, let me, before we get into all that, let me let me stop you because th- there are people who think that you tried to maybe uh, not exploit Ice Poseidon, but to, to play along with some of the racier things that he and his gang, gang did to, to gain fame and notoriety in the in the uh, in the uh, streaming community. How do you respond to that? I mean, what do you mean racier? I've never been oh, sexist. It, it, I've it, never it, broken. Any of the rules of IRL. Right. The reason I got so close to Ice Poseidon is because I was friends with his ex-girlfriend, Caroline Burt, which is a huge issue because he dumped her in Austin, Texas, in front of thousands of people. And it threw her into a serious depression. And her mother called me because our parents know each other. And her mother called me and asked me to help her. So there's a lot of things that happen. Like I'd have to go April, May, June, July, August. But what happened for the first 10 days of me even being around Ice Poseidon is that Mr. Medicare, who is currently on YouTube, who I think personally, in my current opinion, should be banned for life, okay, from YouTube, um, and uh, Andy Worski, who quit YouTube, and um, the Ralph Retort, which is banned for life from YouTube, were people who attached themselves to me and started spreading really bad fake gossip about me. So I branched off from Ice Poseidon into all these other IRL shows. So I have one of the most powerful histories of females in IRL streaming with different types of streamers on different types of shows. How many, people, how many, people, how many people, Corinne, watch you when you stream? Do you figure? How many people? Okay, so YouTube. Okay, on YouTube, they don't keep a very good count. So YouTube is very stressful. My biggest stream was when I was dared by Mr. Medicare and the Ralph Retort to go to Compton. So I spent 10 hours in Compton. Now, people restream my stream. So on my own stream, I was getting tens of thousands of people watching. But on the other streams, I was getting like 49K, I was told. 49,000 people watching at one time, which is the biggest for a female in IRL. Does that surprise you that that many people would want to watch you just go through your life and, you know, kind of stream of consciousness broadcast on on YouTube? Well, I'm still in shock about it because I thought that going into Compton was really safe. I had an amazing experience there, but actually it was very dangerous. And I think most people I've been told, allegedly, most people were watching it because they wanted to see if I would get shot or beaten up. The worst thing that happened to me is that an alleged gang member threw coffee that I bought him on me. He stole one of my jackets and I was kicked out. I'm banned from the Walmart in Compton. Other than that, I had an amazing stream. So it's very interesting because I like to show cultural diversity. And I really know I want to know the truth about what's the difference between the streets of Beverly Hills and the streets of Skid Row. And I figured out there's not much difference. So the, the, the Compton stream, what did you think you, uh, you accomplished there? 
The Compton stream, I had personal accomplishments and professional accomplishments. My professional accomplishments were that I had one moderator helping me the whole time. Like right now, I don't know how many moderators you have. I don't know how many people are watching, but you have to have moderators on YouTube. So I have the most angelic people working for free, coming out of nowhere, helping me. But on the personal level, I always wanted to know why people would join a gang. And I realized why they would, for loyalty. The world is a very unloyal place. Even in New York City where you are right now, do you know your neighbors? How many people at your age do you even trust? How many people do you trust, Chris? Loyalty is the reason you join a gang, in my right. personal opinion. Corinne, you just came from something called TwitchCon. Explain yes. that to me. I just spent uh, five days at TwitchCon. So Twitch is owned by Jeff Bezos, who's probably one of the wealthiest men in the world. He's worth over $100 billion. And it's a small part of Amazon. Um, TwitchCon is where all the people who are on Twitch are invited to come. There were about 25,000 to 28,000 people. I am the only person I believe, allegedly in my own opinion, that has never played a video game at the whole TwitchCon. A lot of people are banned from TwitchCon, which is shocking to me because they showed up at TwitchCon uh, certain people like Bjorn, he's banned from TwitchCon. He walked in TwitchCon and he got PD Plastic banned from Twitch. So, Bjorn, so just a lot of stop, stuff. Stop, stop right there. So we know Bjorn is one of the guys who hangs out with uh, with Ice Poseidon. And he Bjorn used to hang out with Ice Poseidon. Now he's been hanging out with Bone Clinks, who is a Twitch out, most hangs, streamer. Bjorn hangs out with, with uh, Blade, Brian. So Bjorn and Blade have been streaming a lot lately, but allegedly they got in a huge fight a couple days ago in Las Vegas when an adult film star sponsored their trip to Las Vegas, which is a trip I was invited on, and I said no. So you, By the way, that I mean, given no Blade, um, Brian Rizzo, Korean forever is talking shit. She has some uh, mental issues him, going uh, on. Uh, in RV her life, that he streamed getting in bed with a woman whose uh, screen name is uh, Gucci's. And I know her. Apparently, uh, depending on who you talk to, and there were a lot of uh, drugs involved, and drinking was involved, and by by. Uh, I wouldn't say a lot of drugs. I'd say but mushrooms and alcohol. That's, that's part of the whole culture there. What no, you, it's really what, not. What I don't do much. Blade, Blade, Blade kind of came in that particular trip. It was Blade came on the show and said, "Hey, look, you know, I've made a lot of money doing this, and part of this is people paying me to drink and be on, and so it, it's a little cloudy." But he was adamant that he did not commit any any impropriety, any sexual impropriety in that incident. Okay, so a sexual impropriety is when you touch a girl without her consent, correct? I would say so. What do you define as a predator or a sexual impropriety? Give me your exact definition so I can answer this properly. Well, I, I, the allegation was, and, and, and Gucci's has been, you know, back and forth saying it either did happen or it didn't happen, depending on who you believe and what video you see. But I think any any contact, physical contact that is is not consensual, uh, it can be either battery or assault. I think that's the law. Okay, so in my current opinion, I know Gucci's. Okay, I love her like a, a second uh, sister. Um, I know her ex-boyfriend DJ, who's also a live streamer. Okay, Gucci's has done things in the past, but she is an amazing young woman and she would never want Blade to touch her. Okay, so I believe from the text messages and the phone calls that I personally received from Gucci's that Blade touched her without her permission and consent. And Blade has touched me and shoved his tongue in my mouth without my permission and consent. Okay, and so there's. What did, you, what did you say to him when this allegedly happened? I was in shock. We were streaming at a Bone Clink's streamer house because I do like to be on Twitch and YouTube at the same time. I like to go on all the different platforms, but Blade is banned from Twitch. He started on Twitch, now he's banned. So when he did this to me, no one was watching. He turned both our phones, our cameras the other way, and he shoved his tongue in my mouth. But he only does that when he's under the influence of alcohol. When Blade, Blade is the ultimate alcoholic, in my current opinion. When he's not drinking alcohol, he is a gentleman and a decent person. The second he starts drinking alcohol, he is a totally different person personality and it's shocking and Keemstar, Chemstar, whatever the guy's name is, I've only met him once at Ice Poseidon's, okay, should be getting Blade into rehab. You know what they did? Instead, they said, Blade, take mushrooms. 
at uh, Ice Poseidon Streamer Place in Tarzana, California, that got closed down by the FBI. They said, uh, Keemstar Kemstar said, take mushrooms to blade, okay? Corinne, so, is this, is this, a, is this a, an environment where streamers almost have to be outrageous, they have to do- uh, No, that push no. The limit to, get, to get viewers, to get, no. to get clicks? No, there are only five, maybe five girls in the world that do what I do. Five girls in the world. We'll talk about that later because it's very serious. And maybe 20 boys who do IRL. So no, you don't have to be outrageous. And it should be more like the TV show Friends. But it's gotten outrageous because they're making money. They're making text-to-speech donations and media donations by drinking. So basically, they are encouraging it. Blade, number one, is encouraging it because he's making donations by saying, let's take a shot together. So after 20 shots, I mean, I could only handle one or two shots. After 20 shots, of course, he's going to be drunk. And he's dying, in my opinion, of alcoholism. He has open why wounds. Why, 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 a day ago, two days why, ago. Corinne, why do people want to watch Blade drink himself to death? Um, because are you ready for this, Chris? And we've got to name it. Are you ready? Sure. Are you ready for my opinion? Because I'm writing a book about IRL now, okay? Me and Adrian Chen are writing a book about IRL separately. But my book is my real life experience. I think there are people out there, Chris, who are maybe predators, but there's a worse problem going on out there. There are people who take delight and love watching you when you're miserable. And this is the biggest issue with IRL. I believe from my investigation over the last 18 months, okay, that the people who watch IRL are number one, anonymous, which I don't think they should be allowed to be anonymous. And number two, most of them are anonymous. And number two, they take the light, like it's sadism, it's uh, what's the word, masochistic, they take the light and, and seeing you be miserable. Is and that's why shit. they donate, and it's sick. So and that's why I'm opposite. I'm Lavender. I'm Team Lavender. Ice Poseidon had the Purple Army, which attacked me so many times. I had to go to the FBI and report the Purple Army. But what I'm telling you is that I'm trying to show positive role modeling and fight cyber bullies, fight, fight doxers, fight people that seek to destroy other people. I'm saying, why can't we just have fun with each other, make this fun like the TV show Friends? There are people who take delight in seeing you miserable, Chris. Like when your show didn't work with Ice Poseidon, everybody loved that. Majority of people. I don't want to say everyone, but I'm saying they're people. What do you call that? What do you get out of this by doing this, Corinne? I think that I think that, and I got in a huge fight with Bone Clinks about this. Bone Clinks is another IRL streamer. He's mostly on Twitch, but he's been on YouTube a lot. I think that I do this because I am doing the best I can to be a positive female role model in IRL. I'm writing a book about my experiences because they were so horrific. They drove me to almost committing suicide last year because I was getting so bullied. I'm fighting cyberbullying. You know, I'm a philanthropist, but now I'm looking in the eyes of the people that I'm talking to. I'm working on discords. I'm trying to get people to learn how to get along with each other. I want to be a founding forum mother of IRL because IRL is not going away. It's going to get more and more powerful. Nobody watches cable TV. The Emmys were down 30% this year. Do you think Do you think this IRL streaming is the future of, of entertainment? I do. And that's why we have to be really why, careful. Why do, you, why do you think so? Because, because as I st said in the beginning, millennials, and I talked to tens of thousands of millennials in the last year. I think I'm honestly, not to be rude, I'm probably one of the, uh, the women um, in the United States that has talked to more millennials than anyone. Um, they don't like fake, they don't like phony, they don't like scripts, they don't like makeup, they don't like anything that, that's fake. They want real. They're sick of watching fake stuff. And so scripted television is probably going out very slowly. Cable TV stations are losing money, Dish TV, uh, is sinking, I would definitely short their stock, allegedly, allegedly, I don't wanna get in trouble for that, but I'm saying that people don't like scripted, they like real. And so many times in my live streams, mistakes have had to happen, like Hampton Brandon pull a knife on me. So much has happened, okay? So much real stuff has happened. It's very exciting, it keeps you in the moment. It makes me feel young. Right, it makes you feel young. What does it- It keeps you in the moment. <laughs> what is it that, that a female streamer has to do to succeed in this medium? Okay, so this is the real issue and it's a really big problem, are you ready? Yeah. I'm not a YouTuber, I don't do anything edited. I've never, I don't know how to edit. I don't know how to do anything that's pre-prepared. Okay, everything I do is off the cuff, just like you saw me get dressed today, off the cuff. 
-hmm. nothing's pre-planned. We talked a little bit, you know, you, you and I talked a little bit. So what's your main question? What do you really want me to get what at? Take, what does it take for a woman in the IRL streaming community to succeed? Okay, so basically- so do you, you have to be racist? Do you have to be, you know, okay, so this, is, this is where it becomes a problem. No, you don't have to do any of that. You have to have a dedicated person like Sam Pepper's girlfriend, Hannah, uh, Sam Pepper watches over Hannah and makes sure that she knows how to stream. You have to have a dedicated, you have Vincent. I have 25 moderators who work 24 seven for me for free. You have to have a dedicated tech team because the technical problems that happen are out of control. I didn't have that in the beginning. So I was hacked. My IT guys, I like DJ showed his uh, private parts on my channel and took me down. It's really hard for girls to get ahead in IRL. So what you have to have is you have to have a technical assistance that really helps you, especially because because I've never really done desktop streaming. But okay. When we, when we, Karen, when we talk about content, I mean, what does it take for, for a woman? I'm going to tell you, I'm trying to answer that. So number one, you better get your technical stuff together and not give your passcodes to anyone or let anyone hack you. Number two, okay, you have to be able to stream with other streamers and get their clout, get their followers. And so for the last... 16, 18 months, that's what I've been doing. So I have a really good amount of followers because I stream with almost every single major person in IRL. Uh, so that's that's what I had to do it. In the middle of doing that, I've been sexually harassed more than I think any woman in Hollywood has ever been sexually harassed. It's shocking. So here's a the question. The next thing you need to do, the next, I, the next, the last thing, there's three things, you have to be able to hold your own stream. When I hang up with you right now, Chris, I can walk down the street in the city that I'm in and hold my own stream. Do you understand that? I don't need you. I don't need anybody to hold my own stream, and that's very important. So you're a parent. You have children, right? Yes. Does it... Is it odd for you to be in this world and worry about children being targeted by this very... Well, my children, my stepchildren, my adopted children have all been targeted, but thank you. The FBI has been wonderful, been really wonderful. And thank you, my viewers have been wonderful. And I don't think that this is very, very controversial. I don't think children under 18 should be able to have any social media account without both parental or guardian consent, number one. And number two, I think it's really important that there's no anonymous people allowed on the internet. There's too many anonymous people. I think in order to join YouTube or Twitch or any of the social medias, you should have to turn in your driver's license and actually be not anonymous so you're accountable. Now, but you've done a couple colorful things on, on streaming. For instance, of course I have, so have you. We've all done colorful things. That makes life beautiful. What have but, I done? I know, but, but if, if, you mentioned something interesting to me in one of our conversations before this show, that that there are people who may need that, that women in your position need to do uh, almost soft porn to survive, to get to get subscribers, to make money. Okay, so to clarify so, that very that specific, true? because it's very specific, because I am an American civil rights activist and it's your right to watch porn if you're over 18 or whatever the law is in your country. But what I have noticed from all the females that I have personally experienced and live stream with is that they have a couple of guys who support them financially. And those guys want private Snapchat photos on the side. Okay, they want private Discord conversations. Are you familiar with Discord? Yes, I am. Yeah. Okay, they want private things on the side and so, the only females that I know in IRL who can support themselves, okay, are the ones that do light porn, which I'm not judging. I'm just saying I don't want to get involved in that. I get over 100 requests a week for uh, nude photos. I would never, I, I've only ever had topless by accident. And Ice Poseidon and his manager, Brent Caskill, did steal my iPad. So they did take photos off my iPad and put them all over the internet. And I do have some internet stalkers. Uh, this certain website that's been stalking me and putting a lot of fake news about me. So I want to talk about Google too, the Google search engine before we end this. Before, but but before, we, get, before we get to that, yeah. Corinne, what has to happen to, to sort of monitor this whole IRL scene so people aren't harassed, people aren't doxxed. By the way, doxing for anybody who doesn't know, it's hard to believe anybody who doesn't know watching this is taking somebody's personal information and putting it out of the public realm. 
to be harassed. I mean, you know, Vincent and I do a show that is, you know, pretty straightforward. You know, we, we have different guests on, we explore different topics, and and, and people harass us just because, we, you know, we step foot in, in this here for really no good reason, except it appears to be, you know, folks being mean and in spite you know. I've already here, gotten three death threats. You know, do stories and educate <laughs> You know, I don't know why 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 somebody would take issue with that. But so, what do we do? Is this just a matter of this um, the the streaming world having to police itself? Is that even possible? How do, how do you even deal with that? I've already gotten three death threats because of the show, and a lot of people they text them to me because my unicorn phone number got doxxed by me by accident the first day that I streamed. I didn't know anyone would even call me, but this is a very famous phone number that anyone can text or call. It's not my real phone. This is my real phone. But the bottom line is that I've already gotten three death threats and uh, dick pics and just tacky stuff. So every time someone does that to me, and they could be calling from a fake phone number, but I take photos of it and I email it to the FBI and my team of moderators. Shout out to all my moderators. I respect all of you. So I'm trying to fight cyber bullies by doing my IRL straight so out. What, what, what is YouTube doing? Enough? I mean, you know, you, you get, somebody can hit you with a copyright strike and cause a problem for your channel. You, get, you know, three channels over, they could be instructing, you know, adults on how to have inappropriate uh, contact with children or animals or whatever goes on in the wild, wild west of YouTube. So YouTube is a big issue because they are not monitoring the content in the way that they should be. And they don't consider IRL important. They don't even like IRL, honestly, in my opinion. And shout out to Susan. Shout out to the Google founders. I respect all y'all. I've raised a lot of money for all y'all with their different charities and things we do. I've met all y'all at different charities because I've been a very serious philanthropist my whole life. But the most important thing is that YouTube does not give us an 800 number to call and say, hey, this is what's going on. I'm an IRL streamer. I have a really good following. Please help. They make us send them endless emails that I don't know if they read or not. So the customer service at YouTube needs to be A plus and it's F. It's F minus right now. So God bless you, peace, YouTube. It's time for you to give us IRL streamers a chance. We need good customer service so we can tell you what's going on. It's very important. Is this just a big brush fire that ultimately is going to burn itself out, this whole Never. IRL streaming community? No. It's going to get harder and deeper and stronger more, let me tell you, because nobody wants to watch fake news, okay? So right now, we're not talking about any fake news. We're talking about my experience, your experience. You're being a very professional interviewer, which I, I appreciate because you're my first professional interview. I've had lower level interviews, but you're professional and I appreciate you. So we need you on YouTube. We need you on Twitch. We need you on all the social medias. We even need a new IRL platform. But what is a really huge problem is the Google search engine is not being properly moderated. So that's a problem because when you register to vote, you get doxxed automatically. And people can buy on the different uh, search engines on Google your uh, past information that could be real or fake, houses you've lived in, phone numbers you've had, current, past, different. So Google search engine really, really needs to get their moderation level better. And I believe that if you don't want to be on the Google search engine, you shouldn't have to be. So I've got, a, I've got the reason I do live streaming is that I've got um, bigger things I want to do with our American civil liberties. I think we're unregulated right now on the internet and IRL. And I think we just need a little bit of regulation. Well, let's take a break right there, Corinne. And, and I think a lot of people take issue with, you know, things being on Google that, that, that are false. And, and a lot of fake news. That, 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 that's out there. It's hard to, hard to control. So, Vincent, you uh, you hooked in here, bud? I am. Let's take a couple questions uh, for either myself or, or Corinne and, and see what people have to say out there. I'm sure there's, there's plenty, plenty of people want to talk about here. We got a clearing, clearing, clearing going on here. Uh, who's checking in? All right. Um, I got a question from Anonymous. Uh, wants, wants to know if this is a true story or not, you, that you were almost raped on stream by a gang member named Danny in Compton. He tried uh, leaving down an alley, a security guard came out and scared Danny off. Is that true? That is not what happened, and it's shocking to me because it's all on stream and people can see what happened. So what, what did happened happen? That, what did happen in that instance, Corinne? What happened in that particular instance is that I met an alleged gang member. I don't know if he is or is not. I can't verify that. 
He had the gang insignia. He had all the tattoos. And I was very intrigued with him because I'd never met anyone with a passion level and a loyalty level. And so he and I started spending a couple hours on stream together. So I bought him coffee at McDonald's. He ended up leading me down a dark alley, okay? And my own father was watching this whole thing, okay? Uh, one of my moderators had to send me an Uber, but what happened is that I didn't really understand what he wanted. I was flirting with him because he was very passionate. And at that time I was single and I'm currently single. So when I'm single, it's my right to mingle and flirt if I want to. But so, um, let me get this straight. You're in, you're, in, you're in Compton streaming. You meet a gang yeah. member and you're flirting with a gang member, member who you just met that night. So basically, I'm in Compton for 10 hours. It was the most stressful stream of my life because my TTS is going off nonstop from people in Russia and all over the world. I had Mr. Medicare. I had the Ralph Retort, who's currently banned on YouTube. I had a lot of things going down. So I had people picking me up. Super fans were picking me up, taking me in and out of Compton. I don't know where to go in Compton, but I ended up at the McDonald's in Compton. So I meet Danny. And to this day, I don't know for sure if he's a gang member or not. I've only met him once in my life, but I let him. I thought he was going to show me Compton from his eyes, which is what I wanted to see. It ended up being that we were flirting and that, uh, you know, it was very interesting. And he kept on walking me down these dark alleys. And I kept on saying, wait, I don't want to go down these dark alleys. OK, so what happened at the very end is that I was smart enough to get myself to a location the security guard, nobody helped me. I showed my camera onto the address I was at, and one of my super moderators, shout out to you, Palers, you saved my life, sent me an Uber because I couldn't even get an Uber for myself. No well, one sent me an Uber. Corinne, let me stop you there. Don't you put yourself out there and in danger by doing this in the first place? I mean, what do you, what do you course, think? Is happen? Of course. I did it on a dare and I proved it. That's why people respect me. I've never been to Compton. After I left Compton, I went to the Beverly Hills Hotel. I can go from Compton to the Beverly Hills Hotel and have a drink. Okay, that's the kind of girl I am. Well, let, me ask you this. let me ask you this, Corinne. Let me ask you, this. You, you come from a well-to-do family. You were married. To I, I don't know if I would say that, allegedly. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm not okay. sure. What I, I'm saying is, you know, people know your past. People know that you've been- No, they don't. No, people don't know anything about my past. I'm so sorry I, they don't. You know what I'm saying is that you come from a comfortable background. And, and I don't know if that's true. Money. My life has not been comfortable. That's not true. But how is it that somebody who could have had a, a comfortable life by going down one path now is going down this path where you're in chaos so much of the time? Because I went, I'm not in chaos. Do I look like I'm in chaos right now? Well, you could say that. I mean, you know, your streaming is a chaotic business. That's all I'm saying. I w I'm not in chaos. I'm not in chaos right now. In the what beginning, I, I was in chaos. I, when I, I, but, but, but Corinne, listen to me for a minute. By going into with a live, you know, streaming show, it's chaotic. There's no question. I was right. dared to do that by Mr. Medicur I, and I, Leslie I understand, I understand so it. My, my question is... Okay, so you want me to sit in Beverly Hills and, and stay in... Uh, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just curious as to, to how it feels to, to have lived on both sides, sort of. But you just said it yourself. One it's exhilarating and it's changed my life forever and I want to do it all over the world. If I could be anywhere right now, I'd be in Hong Kong showing how the Chinese government is abusing the people, the children, the younger children of Hong Kong right now. I'm very interested in turning this into real news. So I've been trying to learn the best I can. I've made tons of mistakes in live streaming. I have been a little risque. Who cares? Everybody's a little risque. I've said the wrong things. I was a journalism major at USC. But my broadcast journalist teacher told me that my chest was too big, so I would never make it on the air. I've come back around now that my children are in boarding school and graduating and going off to college, and they've had amazing lives, and now I have to find myself. So IRL is actually helping me find myself. And yes, I've been in very dangerous situations, but let me tell you something, I don't regret it. I regret streaming with the live streamers who've tried to drag me into doing pornography or try to touch me without my consent. I've regretted streaming with real predators that you're trying to take down like Blade. Only Use Me Blade is a groper and he needs to be banned from all social media, in my opinion, and he needs to go to serious rehab for about six months to a year. Otherwise, he's going to die. Okay, and I do believe that he did touch Gucci's without her permission or consent. Let's uh, let's hear from some other folks who are tuned in tonight. Uh, Vincent, what do you got for us? Um, I have a question. Uh, it is, 
Uh, who is Uncle Buddy and this word of, of alleged footage of you admitting to sleep in W uh, with Y5, your uncle who you call a clue buddy? I don't get I that. Mean, I don't know what they're talking about. I have no idea. I have many people on my stream and I call them uncle and we do lots of fun, stupid stuff. I've had a lot of different people on my stream. I don't, I don't know what he's talking about. It's stupid. Dumb question. Can we have another question? It's yeah. I'm not yeah. talking well, let, 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 let me ask you. Let me ask let me ask you something. Do your kids Sometimes watch Sometimes I say on my stream, this is my boyfriend, my girlfriend. The other night I kissed. I kissed a Twitch employee who was a female. I mean, I've done some wild stuff on my stream, but I'm LGBTQPAA friendly. We got that. And, that, that, you know, that, that's your that's your thing. And that's fine. Well, you, no, that's you. everyone's thing because Twitch requires that and the world right. requires that. Yeah, yeah, I and get that's that. Why, that's, that's why one thing I always say, I say, Trumpy Trump, get rid of my pence and let me be VP because... Mike Pence is not LGBTQPAA friendly, and it's very important to have that in America now. I think that's safe to say. Hey, listen, do your kids ever watch your stream, Corinne? Probably, yes, but and I don't ask them to. They're very busy with their homework. They have to be. They have to get into Ivy League schools. They have a lot of pressure. What so do I they don't want to talk about what, Chris. What, what, I don't want to talk about minors. We're not talking about minors, Chris. No, I know, but I'm just follow what, your what own is, rule. Don't ask me about minors. I understand that, but what do they do? They have a take on this. Or what do they think about their mom? Chris, do not ask me about minor children ever. Sorry, sir. All right, you know you what? But I've got, I've got kids too. You know, they're not minors, but uh, you know, they well, give me. Well, you don't live stream the do. way I do, so What's I that? I will go I will go to any dangerous neighborhood and live stream twenty four seven. OK, I need someone to donate to the stream and support right. it because I can't afford to do it. Live streaming, my phone bills per month are about twelve hundred dollars. Equipment is about another five thousand. It's at least five grand a month just to live stream properly. It's so very what, expensive. What's next for you, Corinne? And this what's is next? fake. I am allowed to see all of my children. I've never sold any children. That's illegal in the United States. No, 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 Stupid, no, no. dumb, fake no, news from here. The, the, the no, no, I saw someone say that on your in your right. chat. But, and it's just but, my, but my question to you is... is I'm not talking about that. minors ever. Right, that's fine. I get it. I just What I'm asking, I guess, is what does your family think of all this? I mean, do I care? I'm a 40-year-old woman. What does your family think? Who cares? I think tonight, that what I they, they might be questioning I, my sanity tonight. I okay, oh, questioning your sanity for talking to me, or I'm questioning not your talking to you. I mean, for being me. for being in this venue, I'm not. I'm not taking a shot at you. Well, maybe they'll question your financial sanity because you don't make a lot of money live streaming yet. But let me tell you something. This is the future of all media. And if I get the right investors, I have a plan that will make the next Fortune 400 company Forbes 400 member. So basically, I plan on going further and further on IRL. I'm writing my first book, which I think my book will be better than Adrian Chen's book because I've actually experienced everything you can imagine. And I do appreciate, I don't leave the United States in stream. I appreciate going into the worst neighborhoods, supposedly worst neighborhoods, and showing you that, that everyone can get along. Like, you know, Rodney King said, let's all just get along. I respect everybody. I love everybody. And if I've done something wrong, I apologize. Okay. So I try to be a positive female role model. I want everything money cannot buy. True passion for what you do, true loyalty, true respect, true, true everything that money can't buy. And I think this world is obsessed with money. And that's a bigger issue. So, what do you think have been your most important streams, Ren? What, what do you I think that, that my most important streams haven't happened yet because I'm a baby streamer. I'm only 18 months old. But I think that to date, my most important streams have been me showing that I've gotten in fights with people. And then I apologize. They apologize. And now we're all friends like Bjorn. Just two days ago, Bjorn took my stream and he, and he totally messed the whole stream labs up. Okay. And then two hours later, he apologized to me and I got my Streamlabs working again. But these guys will take your equipment, they will totally turn everything off, and then two hours later they'll apologize to you. So I like to see human interaction and I think by showing the fact that you can get in a fight with someone and then apologize and be friends with them again is really important. So what do you think your greatest accomplishment has been so far? Okay, so my greatest accomplishment is the fact that I believe in helping people who have been uh, sitting behind their computers their whole lives, doing homework, gaming, say, hey, let's get social. Let's walk down the street and get social. And I think it's really, really important to show people positive male and female role modeling. Your private life should be private. Who I go home with at night needs to be private. 
my private life needs to be private. You should not be talking about children under 18. They shouldn't even be allowed to be part of the live stream. And uh, creating, I think that people like me and you hopefully will join the team. We will be going to Washington, D.C. and lobbying. When I was at TwitchCon, I was talking to one of the lawyers for Twitch about how important it is to lobby for our rights in IRL. So there's a lot of different issues to this that you said that we could have more time to talk about. We've only had 42 minutes. I can get really specific for you because IRL is not going away. Right. It's not I, th I, think, I think you're right about that. I think it's going to be around for a long time. So let's take a couple more questions from the folks uh, who are tuned in tonight, Vincent. Yeah, I got uh, two more questions that came in. One uh, from more than one person, and we are looking at – uh, Kiwi Farms thread. What is your thoughts on that? I think that Kiwi Farms is an illegal website uh, that needs to be completely banned from all social media. Their only purpose is to bully people and dox them. And I think that 90% uh, of the stuff that Kiwi Farm, I've never even read it because I don't have time. I don't even want to waste my time promoting them. But I have major lawyers on my team working against them. And what they do is they say your opinion of the stream. So they could say, oh my gosh, Chris Hansen looked really old today and terrible. And he looked like he and Corinne were having an affair. That is fake news. And that should not be allowed on the internet. And that's what Kiwi Farm would allow on the internet. Somebody's opinion about our stream tonight I don't, I don't that would be totally be fake. So Kiwi they Farm should be completely bullied. banned from every social media. I think they uh, cause people to be bullied so much. They've caused people. People call me all the time. People want to kill themselves and commit suicide because of Kiwi Farm. Here's, here's the question. Here, here's, here, here's the question, though. Knowing what you know about this world, about the environment, do you invite this upon yourself by by putting yourself out there? You know what's going to happen. You know. I'm going to ask you the same question. I'm going to ask you the same question, Chris. Knowing what you know about the predator world, do you invite yourself out there to maybe potentially get murdered by one of the predators you expose? We have to. We've been called by God to do something good for the world. We're angels in cyberspace. I know, but there's we a difference just between, there's cyberspace. A difference between this and the news network. Television too, I'm right? fighting. I'm fighting a war every day in cyberspace to try to make it a little bit of a better place. Please join me in that war. Anyone so what, who wants to be Team what can, Lavender. What can, you, what can you do to make it a safer place in cyberspace? What do you well, think? Trying, so what that? I've been trying to explain to you is that I have my community is called Team Lavender. And what we do is we say no domestic terrorism. So domestic terrorism is when one of your fans from all over the world calls the local police or sheriff or CHP and has you swatted. And so I've been swatted about five times and seven times in my car. So I don't drive and stream ever again. So a lot of the people you see on my streams are drivers for me. Um, I think it's, can you hear me? It's also important to expose corruption. There's a lot of corruption going on in Uber and Lyft drivers, a lot of things like that. I think that I'm going to go into government corruption. I'm going to be going into a lot of stuff I've talked to Vincent about that I'm not sure I'm willing to give you unless you're really ready for it. But I'm going to use the IRL to talk about very important things like the fact that all these environmentalists who say they're not leaving their carbon footprint are flying around in private planes and buying thousands of dollars of clothing that are all causing pollution in our world. The, produ the production of clothing causes pollution. So I think that what I want to do is use the IRL and end up exposing the real corruption. Right now, I only buy my clothes the cheap I can, the cheapest I can. I wear the same thing all the time. I, I try not to really care what I look like. I try to get my purpose across. I try to show the cleanliness of city streets and other live streamers, which after talking to you, probably no one will ever live stream with me again. So I'm going to cast my own show, but I'm out there fighting a war every single day in a new and different way. And I need you, Chris, and other very serious interviewers, um, not Keemstar Kemstar, because he has been, I consider him to be a predator in my current opinion, but the bottom line is that I need other interviewers who are serious to take this seriously and jump in because there's so many stories. What do you, you think? Uh, what do you, what do you, if Ice Poseidon, Paul Dinier is watching tonight, what do you what do you say? To Paul? What would I say to Paul? Yeah, Paul Dinier. I would say to Paul. Since you moved out of Los Angeles, you've fallen in love with an amazing young woman, Kimberly. I'm so proud of you. Your streams may not be making as much money as you used to, but they will again. You've changed, okay? You've not 
harassed people anymore. You may accidentally be talking to people under 18. I think that's an accident. Paul is not a pedophile at all, okay? And I think that, you know, the fact that his Reddit was turned off is a problem, not because of Paul necessarily, but because Paul doesn't have the right moderators. He's on overwhelm. He's just trying to make enough money to pay his rent. I would say, Paul, I'm proud of you. Last year, you were one of the most disgusting people I've ever met in my life. He handcuffed me without my consent in one of my third streams with him, okay? No one does that, and I was all bruised. He stole my iPad with his manager, Brent Caskill, allegedly, and I had to file a, an LAPD report, okay? So basically, they haven't been disgusting streams anymore, and I'd say, I'm proud of you, Paul. You have grown and changed, and your streams are getting more respectful, and I'm proud of you. And what do you say to uh, Brian Rizzo, to uh, Blade? What I said to him two days ago, I said, Blade, when you're sober, you're an amazing man, okay? And he's not young anymore, okay? He's in his late 30s, he's gonna be 40 soon. I would say you need to go to rehab for over a year and never drink alcohol again because his whole personality changed. And yes, he does sexually assault women when he drinks too much. Well, there's a whole lot to consider here, Vincent. Let's take a couple more questions. All right. I mean, we haven't uh, even hit. We haven't even hit half the stuff we talked about. I know. Well, we're gonna. This is gonna be a long running conversation, Corinne. Don't worry. We'll have you back. Well, on. I mean, I hope it is. But there's some more things that I think are really important. Well, I want to talk about. I understand about that. Before. I understand that. But I'll get to that in a minute, Vincent. Let's take a couple more questions. What are people? All asking? right. Yeah. There's a there's a question about Ke uh, Keemstar. Uh, about you trying to appear on a show last year or or you attempted to go on a show? Okay, I Keemstar Kemstar, this is all I know about him. I met him at Ice Poseidon's house last year. I had no idea who he was. He uh, has always... Uh, multiple girls uh, have told me that he requires you to have a threesome with him and his girlfriend or whatever he's dating or whatever it is uh, to be on his show. He doesn't really cover a lot of females in IRL. He doesn't do that. He mostly covers boys. He's the one who gave uh, uh, Brian Rizzo, who gave a uh, blade mushrooms at Ice Poseidon's house in Los Angeles to try to get him sober. So I think Keemstar Kemstar has said the N word too much. And I think he should be banned from YouTube. And I don't know why he has so much power YouTube because he's not supposed to have a channel. I think he uses his girlfriend's channel. But yes, he has been a sexual predator to the women of YouTube, to social media people, and to uh, myself. I've only met him once, but he said he would never let me go on a show. I don't even know anything about his show unless I got together with his girlfriend. So, so Corinne, I'm not into that. Do you ever wonder, Corinne, it's, it's like, what am I doing in this kind of creepy world of IRL streaming. I'd say the same thing to you, Chris. Do you ever wonder what you're doing? I'm in this right now world what I'm of tracking down I'm predators. Right now. I say the same thing to you. I told you again, God chose us to try to be angels, to try to make this world just a little bit of a better place. So when I die, it could be any day you could die. Know, really God knows when you die. At least I tried. Do you want me to give up? Do you want me to quit, Chris? Or you want me to try? I, I, I'm not suggesting that. So, wait, so tell me this. Tell me this. Where do you? Oh, you want me to marry? Do you want me to marry a rich guy with a twenty million dollar house and a five carat diamond and say I'm a housewife of Beverly Hills and I'm so cool because I could have done the housewife of Beverly Hills. I'm not like that. I'm real. And I want to expose corruption. I want to. I want to help make the rules for IRL streaming. I want to be a founding foremother of IRL. That's my purpose. So where do I you? Found, I have passion. Where, where do you see yourself in six months to a year? I mean, God only knows, but I hope I'm streaming. I hope I'm live streaming every day in a new and different way. I don't care how many people watch me. I don't care about that. I care about that at least I change one life. If you watch me and you're suicidal that day, if you watch me and you're sad because your girlfriend or boyfriend or your whatever dumped you, I want to be there for you. I'm Team Lavender. I want you to know that in cyberspace, you have a place where there's people who will be kind to you. You're not going to be bullied by my team ever. So I'm getting a lot of questions here. Apparently on your uh, streams, you're known to sing a song, Aphrodite. Oh, yes. Okay, so I used to have an amazing moderator. She disappeared. And I would say, Aphrodite, come to me. Be with me, please, my Aphrodite. Then I always say, Mommy's going to put you in a timeout if you are not a better person. I say, that's tacky. I say, let's try to make the world a better place. Let's raise the love vibration in cyberspace. I have different words I say. I have different uh, phrases. Got it. All right. Um, 
we're, 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 we're you're a missing a lot of content. stuff. You're missing a lot of content from Sam Pepper to Bone Clinks to all the females. Right. I mean, you're missing a lot. To this Kiara, right, Kitty, this is not the last time you're going to be on the show, Corinne. Well, uh, we don't know, but I'm just saying, like, there's a lot we're missing. <laughs> we don't know. Vincent, I like talk, a more, I'd Vincent, like to talk about. A, yeah, I got it. Hang on. I, Vincent, I want to talk about the Google search from the, uh, from the audience. Um, yeah. Uh, Put your seatbelt on. <laughs> Uh, I'm it, not making fun, Corinne. It just it's no, no, no. Uh, you had a moderator called uh, Grape Juice. Vincent, yes, I used to have a moderator called Grape Juice that I love. She dumped me for Blade. We got in a fight about it because I think that Blade is a genuine a, a, a groper, and uh, hopefully she'll come back to me one day in a new and different way. But I don't know. Got it. Why, why right. do you care about Grape Juice? Why are you obsessed with Grape Juice? And how about Sam Pepper? Yeah, what about Sam Pepper? Sam Pepper? Now, Sam Pepper is another streamer. He's been controversial. I'm just going to be straight up honest. I don't know a lot about Sam Pepper. But what I do know is that every time we talk about Ice or Blade or you or anybody else, Sam Pepper's name comes up. So what's the deal with him? Yeah, so it makes me really sad and very disheartened that you don't know about these streamers because it's Sam Pepper, Hampton, Brandon. Well, I'm, the learning. First time I'm, trying to, I'm trying to learn here. Yeah, so let me educate you. The first time that I even got involved, was like the first or second time I was even, I think it was the second time. The first time that Ice Poseidon and I, Paul and I met, he was super cool to me because he wanted to meet uh, uh, different people to stream with through me because I know a lot of different people. Um, none of my celebrity friends will stream. They won't do it. I've only gotten Chewy Bravo to stream with me. That's the only celebrity I can think of that would stream with me. None of my other celebrity friends will stream with me. But I don't really <laughs> hang out with celebrities. I hang out with CEOs and uh, trust fund babies and Fortune 500 people. So Hampton Brandon has been banned from every social media. Okay. He pulled a knife on me and EBZ. Okay. He's done so many nasty, horrific things. Every time I was in a streamer location with him, he would take videotape of me going to the bathroom, going to number one. I mean, just tacky stuff and put it all over his Instagram. We need better moderation of IRL live streaming through Google. Twitch has the best moderation ever. Uh, you do anything wrong on Twitch and you're banned forever. They're amazing. But Google and the Google search engine needs to be heavily moderated. And so uh, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of things that happen, Reddit, all that stuff. Um, Sam Pepper, the first time I met him, he asked me to sleep with him. I mean, he ran after me with naked photos of himself and one of my girlfriends, Cassandra, and tried to get my stream turned off. It's like if I took my shirt off right now and tried to get your stream turned off. You don't do that to people ever. No, you don't put do pornography on their channel. No, Sam Pepper did that to me. Sam Pepper did that to me. All right. So we've got all these characters, including yourself, Bryn. And, and um, where, where does this, I'm not saying that you're like them or anything else, but I'm just saying in general, streaming, where does it go? Is there a streamer network that develops here? What's the future of this? Okay. So there's no streamer network. We need to find a manager. Shout out to anyone out there who knows how to manage YouTubers or streamers. There's no manager of streamers. There's no one out there organize anything. This is the wild west. And this yeah, has the the wild west so much money. Sure. We're in the wild west. So we need to, uh, at least I do, I would like to talk to different lobbyists. I like to spend a lot of time when my children graduate high school. I'd like to spend a lot of time in Washington, D.C. I'm writing my first book about it. We need to just have like basic regulations. And I think, as I said before, it starts that children under 18 should not be able to have any social media without parental written consent. And if you go on to any of these social media platforms, you should have to prove an ID and prove you're a real person so you're accountable for the stuff you're saying. People have to be accountable. We're talking to anonymous people. All the people who are calling you right now, we don't know if they're real people, fake people. That's we don't true. know what they are. We have no clue. But I'm what I'm my biggest concern, the biggest concern is not cyberbullying. The biggest concern is the Google search engine. And I'm so sorry to say this, but I'm looking to start potentially a class action lawsuit against Google because I have asked Google 
thousands of times this year through faxing their legal teams and their staff members to say, hey, stop doxing me on Google. Stop putting fake news on Google, your search engine. Stop making money off my image and likeness with fake stuff that's going to get me in so much trouble. I, a fiance dumped me because his mother Google search engine me and found stupid stuff on there that's fake news. And so Google search engine needs to step up and get all fake news off. Very important. Hey, Corinne. Anyone I... who's interested in doing a class action lawsuit against the Google search engine, that's please that's contact very... Unicorn Phone. Corinne, can, can I ask you something here real quick? Of course. Can, can I have you back on the show sometime? So, Potentially, yes. I mean, we were going to do about two hours. You're only giving me an hour. There's a lot of stuff to talk that. about. There's a, there, there is a lot more, and I want to I want to pick up the conversation. You look tired. The, the important thing about live streaming, are you ready? The yeah. way that you get the most views on live streaming is you stay on for two to three hours. The most views I've gotten is after a five-hour stream. So That's talk about mean. work. Live streaming is That's serious work. work. We're not going to do that tonight, Corinne, but um, we will we'll, we'll definitely have you back on the show. And I appreciate you being on tonight. I think we Yes, if I have time, I will. I'm very busy fighting cyber bullies. I know that. And I appreciate that. And I am too. But I want to have you back on. And I appreciate you being on tonight. We covered a lot of ground. Thank you, Corinne. Areas. Um, I want to thank you for your insight and sharing your experiences. And, and uh, please come on the show again. Of course. God bless you. Peace. Okay. All right. Thanks again for being here. So guys, that was, uh, you know, uh, eye full and an ear full with uh, Corinne Forever and, and uh, Corinne Clifford. I thank her for being on the show. I am an eye full and an ear full. <laughs> I, I mean that only in a positive way, Corinne. Only of course. I mean, so what else is that? On. Guys, we're going to be back uh, next Wednesday, 8 o'clock, as always. We'll have a good show for you then. We're going to have Corinne on again in the very near future. So uh, um, we'll be in touch. And uh, thanks for tuning in to Hanson versus Predator, the live show on YouTube. And I will see you soon, both on social media and on the TV. So, so uh